Tesla's up 5% today. On Friday after the bell rang, Elon came out saying that on August 8th, they were going to debut their event for their robo taxis. And I've been saying this for a while now to my friends and colleagues within our community, but they were going to talk about it publicly because while this AI bubble has been booming along each and every single month, and we've seen companies like AMD, NVIDIA, SMCI, all these other companies under the sun using AI and seeing the benefits of AI and seeing the stock prices obviously benefit from AI and this current market bubble that we're in, except for Tesla. Now, something that you have to understand is that big money they don't sleep. They don't take their money and just hold it in cash because they understand that cash is fucking worthless. The truth is the only thing that you do with money is you spend it on resources or labor or materials or you build a business with it or you take that money and you lend it to people for interest so that they can go and build products, businesses, and do the same exact thing with it. It's a fallacy to think that you should just have cash sitting in a bank account. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying that this is what banks do. They get rid of cash as fast as they can because they know it's not backed by anything. They would rather have an asset. And so what they're looking for is to take money from things that are obviously extremely overvalued, that they can dump the bag to retail and start buying things that are undervalued. And if you look at Tesla, it has gotten zero love from this AI boom. And I think that we're going to see Tesla have a very strong couple of months. Now, of course, earnings is going to be a complete gamble. We're going to go over that a bit in this video. Guidance is going to be extremely important as well but i think that big money understands that tesla is very undervalued at this moment now looking at this quick chart that i put over on my x account which you guys should definitely be following me over there i throw all of my trades out there for free on tesla but you can see that there's usually five stages that happen within a market cycle and a market cycle could be weeks months, years, it really doesn't matter. One of the case in points that I'm going to show you briefly is looking at this chart and now looking at something like Mara a couple of months ago, or potentially even SMCI currently. See, there's always a couple of main phases. Number one is the catalyst phase, the stealth phase, or the smart money phase. And this is when institutions start getting into the stock. They understand that it is extremely undervalued. Maybe it's an insider who knows something that's coming down the product pipeline, or maybe it's just a whale like Kathy Wood or Ron Barron who thinks that this stock for whatever reason is undervalued, but they start to accumulate shares. Then it gets into the hype mode. This is where we don't really see the public like your everyday barista or Uber driver that's telling you to invest in some meme coin or GameStop. This is where it starts to get pushed across the media a bit and people like us start to pick up on it. You'll see other YouTubers, influencers, people on X, maybe even Wall Street Bets gets a hold of it. But the trading and investing public starts to understand that there might be something here. The next stage would be euphoria and greed. And this is where everyone knows about it. The public's pushing it. Every YouTuber under the planet is making videos about it, and it seems that no matter where you go, everyone, people who shouldn't even be telling you about what to invest in, are telling you that you need to be buying X, Y, or Z. We've seen this with Canadian plants in the past, in 2016 and 2017. Obviously, we've seen this with Tesla, Bitcoin multiple times, Dogecoin, AMC, currently AI, every single cycle usually looks like this when we see a bubble. And then we get to the very important part, which is the profit taking part. And this is extremely important here because you have to think through this from a fundamental level. All of the institutions who are buying in the catalyst phase, all of the smart money retail investors like ourselves who are buying in the initial hype phase, they all now are up maybe 50, 100, 150%. So they have to start taking profits at some point. The only way for a stock to continue to move up is if more money comes into it, driving the bid and the ask higher and higher and higher. So if all of these institutions got in down here, there's no way they're going to continue to build their positions at all time highs. Meaning that the only people there are the people who are late to the party. The ones that we call the bag holders. They're the ones, unfortunately, retail, which is why I like to make these videos to try to help some of them so that they don't get stuck holding the bag. We tend to get a massive sell-off, 
followed by a very strong bounce, which is what I think is happening now with semiconductors, specifically AMD. A solid of enough push that big money can start taking their profits and retail thinks that we're going to make another push higher and higher, so they buy their shares. Of course, there's never enough money to make it that last time higher, and then we get a drastic sell-off back down to mean or to where we should really be. And now I'm not saying that I think Tesla's gonna move into some massive market bubble. I am a long-term bull on this stock and I do own shares long-term and it's one of the many things that I trade and invest in but what I more so think is going to happen is that we're at least going to see a push back up to $240. From a technical standpoint, we have multiple bullish harmonic setups that are right about 71% of the time. So obviously accurate, but not dead on every time. This target would be a push back up to $230 and $240. One hour chart still has multiple bullish targets set here with a 71% success rate up at about $188 to $192. So I do think that we are definitely going to see a push in the next couple of months just from a technical standpoint. Now the thing is, fundamentally, what is going to happen with earnings? Because in order for this to actually happen, in order for us to take out these targets, we're gonna to have to hold this position through earnings. At this point, I am currently holding May calls and September calls. Curiously, it's just known for really screwing up earnings, whether it's guidance or just handing the guy the phone, like as you might believe or not believe in him as a CEO, you just can't lie at the fact that the past couple of earnings calls have not been good. I don't think that anybody is expecting earnings to be great or for this call or guidance to be great. Because when expectations are shit and you can give them something that's maybe above average and maybe even some decent guidance and optimism, I think that we could see Tesla really push its way back up to start taking out some of these targets. And now of course, this in itself is a gamble. So don't follow me, risk whatever you're gonna do and you know, I'm a guy on the internet who's sharing what I'm doing with you every day. And I do plan to do a full pre-earnings video before we actually get the drop. Now let's talk about the S&P 500. The S&P 500 has a very strong bearish signal on the one hour chart, and we're gonna go over why I think we're probably gonna sell off down to about $5,190. You can see that last week we had this massive sell off causing a fair value gap in which we've bounced and now moved our way back up into this level. These horizontal gray bars are actually gonna show us at what price volume has been coming in at. And this golden area is actually considered our point of control or the highest amount of volume within this given time. If we were to take a Fibonacci retracement from most recent swing high on Thursday, April 4th, and pull it down to our swing low, you'll see that our 0.786 Fibonacci lines up perfectly with our point of control. So this is a high confluent or very important zone. From there, you're gonna see that there's a bit of a volume gap between this level and down here from about 5,240 to about 5,200. The optimal chance to go short would be waiting to see if we bounce tomorrow back up into this resistance level or the point of control. From there, we would look to set our stop loss at a higher high of 5,300 and set our take profits down between 5,200 and about $5,170. This would give us a five to one risk first reward. With that being said, the fact that even now we're sitting at a two to one risk first reward means that we could start to open a bearish position if we wanted and plan to add at our optimal short entry. Finally, turning on our break of structure indicator, you're going to see that after breaking the support level, of 20 bars triggered a sell alert on SPY. And over the past 300 trades, we have sold off to a lower low 70 plus percent of the time. So this is the type of setup that I will take each and every single time that it's presented to me. Everyone has been asking me about AMD and we currently have two conflicting patterns. Both are right 80% of the time. One of them is bullish, one of them is bearish. And I currently have a bearish position on AMD. And so right now I have 20 AMD 517 puts for $165 was the strike. You can see my execution here was actually back three days ago on April 5th. And I've been calling these trades out on X. So if you guys are not following me, go and follow me over there. I throw a lot of my trades out there for free every once in a while. The first setup is the bullish trade. And we are going to go over the bearish trade, which is the trade that I currently have open. But I want to first explain the bullish setup because I think that 
if we make a lower low before taking this target out, we could have a really good long side setup here. Now what we're looking for is a harmonic indicator and this has our proprietary setup in it. And what we're looking for is to time the absolute bottom of a trend. Now looking here at the bottom left side of your screen over the past 103 trades, we have had a 77% success rate with a total return of 129%. We're to enter a position right here and take profit at 175.17 with a stop loss at 154. This would give us a 0.35 risk versus reward. And yes, having a 77% success rate is very high, but for me, I would rather wait in most cases for this to sell off into the support level before going along because then we have a much better risk versus reward. Now the bear case here is that 80% of the time when we break a key support level such as $172, if you see at the top right of the screen, 80% of the time we push down into a lower low. And this is why I currently have puts on AMD. And at this point, setting a stop loss at 174 and a take profit down at 158, this gives us a 1.5 risk versus reward, which I will take at an 80% success rate each and every single time. Overlapping the two of them, you could see that in a perfect world, which 80% of the time we hit this target and 80% of the time we hit this target, that in a perfect world, what we would wait for is see if the harmonic pattern pushes back to hit our target of 175, which therefore we would have the ultimate risk versus reward on our put position with a stop loss at a one hour candle closure over 177 and a take profit all the way down at $158. Now this setup, if we allowed this to actually pan out, would be a much lower success rate, honestly, than the 80% that you see, because at that point the support would have held and it looks like we'd probably be pushing up to a higher high. But what you have to understand is if you're somebody who's trading with a small amount of money, you should be looking for these massive 11 to 10 to 1 risk versus reward setups, which do not happen often. I'm telling you, it doesn't happen every day. But if you can be very selective with these types of trades, you could lose four, five, six in a row, and one of these winners would pay for all of that plus profits. So close out some puts today on DraftKings for a small profit, $1,350. And we called this out on our X account. So if you're not following me there, you definitely need to be following me there because I throw a lot of my trades out for free. We took 45, 17, 46 dollar puts. And the reason that we took it is because we had a bearish harmonic setup happening. So basically we had a cipher pattern and this is trying to time the top after a strong impulse. You can see the price sold off here from $49.50 all the way down in just five days, 12% to $43.55. And this led to a ton of imbalancement that had to get filled. So we saw price bounce here and we knew that we were going to see an attempt at a push back up towards 47, 48, maybe even 49. So when we see the cipher come up, we know that there's a 75% success rating here and that over the past 12 trades, we have a return of about 15%. So instead of getting in when it told us to get in, I wanted to wait for this to continue to push its way up, number one, so that we could actually confirm a rejection, but number two, so that we could get a much better risk versus reward. So on Thursday, we called out this trade on X and we saw this rejection point here because if you take your Fibonacci retracement from swing high to swing low, you will see that the 0.707 is right there, which is usually the area that we reject at within our golden zone. We saw price quickly drop about four and a half percent. And I decided to take my profit because yes, we didn't get our target hit yet, but from where we were down to target was only 1%. And on calls, I was up about 40%. So there was no need to try to milk a little bit more out of it. Instead, we figured what we did is exactly what we did today. We took our profits because of how choppy price action was. We waited for price to push back up, not back to the perfect level prior, but at least back up to somewhere near that one-to-one -one RVR. And what's crazy is if you actually take a Fibonacci from swing high to swing low, we rejected once again at the same exact zone. That's how we knew that we weren't going to make an equal high. So we entered short at 47.37, let it sell off, and today took our profit early in hopes that tomorrow we bounce and we can enter once again, maybe down here at about $47 and get maybe a third short out of this.
Now there's a chance that price just comes down and hits target tomorrow of 44 and in that case this trade will be invalidated and we'll just move on to another pattern. If you guys want to trade these patterns with me every day go to our website thtcommunity.com or use the link in the description. I'll see you guys next time.